Welcome back to Twisted Metal Customs. Super excited, just got back from a holiday, which is awesome, thanks for asking. But now we're getting right back into this XW build. I've been dreaming about it actually while I was away. So first things first is I'm gonna get this thing, hopefully, without too much drama, loaded up on the rotisserie. So then we can flip it around and start working on this rust repair. So, all right. That was not nice and easy. Okay, so I've got the XW pretty well on top of the rotisserie, okay? Doesn't look like it's very strong, but we'll find out. Because it's, it's currently nearly suspended, but I'm gonna take out the diff and all those tires off just because I think it's throwing out the weight a bit. And I need to position it so that I can spin it. Drop the diff out, get it out of the way. I'm not gonna reuse this diff, it's just a one wheel wonder. I've got that nine inch that's in that XF Falcon Ute, which is there if you want to watch the donor car. All right, I'll get into this. Let's do it. I've got the diff out, springs, the hangers, and all that sort of stuff. And it seems to be holding okay. Now, I have got a problem, as usual, but it seems to want to, like, I've got the pin in there, but it's definitely heavier on that side, or it's misaligned. And now, I've got it pretty well center to the car, like the pivot point, but for some reason it's really heavy that side. It's got one extra door. And then actually why it's up the way it is, I can try to start getting a worse <laughs> mock-up of a front I was trying to deal with. If you watch the other episode, you'd see me uh, trying to, with Jess's help, trying to tow this thing back to the house. It was just a nightmare because it didn't have any of this on in the paddock where I first picked it up. So I made this real dodgy up control arm, if you will. It's not really anything. I just tried to keep a tire on there. But while well, I've got it off, I might grind that top bit off and then, yeah, take off all that bottom swing arm and all the other bits and pieces and components, all that crap, because it's going straight in the bin. Um, clean it all up, get... Basically, I want this thing to be stripped with all the extra stuff I don't want so I can get it set up one time for the duration of the rust repair. That's where we're at today. Good four or five hours. Um, get it get pretty close, so... I'll uh, tidy this up. I'm just trying to get it a bit more aligned before I um, knock off for today so I can get a good start on this tomorrow. Good morning. Well, actually, it's afternoon. It's 1.30. I spent a few hours doing some jobs I had to get done this morning. I've got all those components out and I've uh, just got a couple more to take out on this side. And then we're pretty well ready to start the rust repair process. Uh, rotisserie, I'd say definitely I would recommend you getting one if you've got the space. So it takes up another, you know, probably meter with length. So if, you, if you've got a short shed, then you might struggle with space. But if you have the space, then I recommend getting it because it's so much easier getting to the sides, the sills underneath the car, especially if you want to do a proper restoration on your car, not just a half hack job. So get one if you can afford it and have the space. They're pretty cool. Now, I have a lot of rust repair to do on this. As you can, if you've seen this car, it's got rust repair panels that need to be done pretty much every single section. So if you've got rust at home in your car or you wanna learn a bit more on rust repair, stick around because I've got a shit ton to do and it's probably gonna be one of the parts that you need to repair on yours. If that sounds like you, stick around, and subscribe if you haven't so you don't miss anything. We'll get stuck into this rust repair. I've taken all those components out and I'm just going to use the uh, air chisel to clean up all this tarry, rocky crap that's been settled in here for eternity. Get rid of that, make sure there's no rust repair sections to do in here, um, and I'm going to work at this section at a time. So two things before we start, some advice if you're going to start a, a you know, pretty extensive rust repair journey on your car. Two things will be one work at a section at a time same as when you're doing body work and everything else just grab one section so for example inside this wheel arch section here 
just work at that section till it's all completely done and then move on to the next section and the second part would be that your skills will get better so you don't want to start here at a hard spot you know hard section by the time you get around the car you look back at the work you've done you're like oh my god did i do that you have cut it out and do it again so that's the second reason why so take it or leave it just some advice that i've picked up and learnt myself and i've been given similar advice to that so it works really well i'm going to start cleaning this out less gibberish and less talking and more cutting and well then you can see it, it uh, works pretty well cleaned up all the crap all that sort of tarry stuff they put on there and this is a better look at their rust repair under the battery box section but we'll have to take off this plate and then uh, repair that bottom section and then try to if that's no good i'll remake that plate put underneath seems like the bolts are all rusted off anyway probably cut it out and there's another section here to do and a little bit of here where it ripped out where i did my dodgy uh makeshift bracket so I hammer that down and re-weld that up clean that up and the bottom looks pretty good as you see it's uh, fresh steel here so from factory that crud was on there and this section is just those two this section here and that section there so pretty good oh and this one sorry three <clears throat> and then i can uh seal this off and paint it black and that's that motivation piece i was telling you about that's mostly that's about half the car done so pretty good so my first go-to tool required to do rust repair a lot easier is this little bad boy i've spoken to it about it before on the channel um all my stuff's pretty much pff, super cheap auto or repco or whatever it is black ridge so it's like 40 50 bucks this little thing here is awesome it's uh easy lock or roll lock whatever it's called it's got like a this comes off as well it's got a stem threaded stem and that's like the the base hang on oops this is the roll lock sanding disc for it i get the three inch ones for the three inch piece then i also bought a two inch one and then i've ground the two inch one down to a one inch so i can use the same disc three inch disc works all the way down to a two inch and then i just cut it down further you know to a one inch so i'm getting three times the usage out of it i know other channels have spoke about that too but it works it works really good and it saves a lot of money because these are about if you were to buy these from a shop they're about dollar 80 or two dollars each disc and you can go through them fairly quick if you're doing a lot of grinding or you go into my amazon link in the description below on the website and you can get 20 of these i think 22 or 20 of these for like 10 bucks that's what i've been doing so and they're just the same exactly the same thing just sandpaper with little things stuck to it so 50 cents each compared to two dollars if you're going to buy some stuff check out the link because i need to get some stuff sold so i don't become a proper affiliate through my amazon um i'm going to sell two items so one of you kind people out there buy two things for me so i can stop renewing it i need to make a sale to become an official affiliate with them i get like whatever percentage is three percent or something of a sale so that'd be sweet if you want to help me out that way support the channel after about 10 years time i'll be able to put that money back into a car or something or some more tools <laughs> anyway check it out if you want to buy some stuff for your restoration because it does get expensive over time so check out the link anyway that's more talking i want to do already on that third thing is our oh, second thing is this little pneumatic grinder i use this and that pretty much 90 percent of the tools i use let's say for example this was a butt join on the panel and i've weld stitch weld along you're always going to have that you know weld sticking out i use this to go along just on the weld to bring the weld down to the level of the maiden steel when it gets close like i don't want to go lower i want to go just proud and then i go switch back to that sanding thing and this is what it ends like there's a big weld along there and you can't even really tell it you can't even tell that it was there so that's what the finish that you want so those two tools are a must have if you want to do a good uh rust repair job and then thirdly it'll be a trolley because it makes it super easy just to put your hand over here and grab what you want okay i'm trying to make this quick stay there don't go anywhere 
Uh, next one's going to be welder settings. It's a very controversial, uh, controversial subject because there's many different settings, many different ways to skin a cat, so to speak. So for me, on my welder, and the reason why I've done what I've done, I'll explain it real quick. I, I used to use 0.9 mil wire, gasless, sucked. It just, I do not recommend gasless wire at all. I know people swear by it, but I hate it. It's crap, it's messy, it takes so much heat to get it to melt in. Just do yourself a favor and go gas. I know it's more pain in the ass, but go gas. And the second thing is, if you've got a lot of rust repairs, go to a 0.6 wire. I've gone to 0.6. It's a bit more expensive for the roller wire, but it still lasts you a year. So 30 extra bucks for an extra wire, whatever it is. Go 0.6 because you will have less blow throughs. Being a smaller wire, you get uh, better penetration and less heat into the panel. So it's probably the biggest thing that I've learned in the time is small wire with gas. And the th third thing is settings. Obviously, oh, well, first of all, this is a Unimig Viper 182. Yours is going to be probably different. I'm not saying this is the go-to one. It's just what I bought at the time. That's a good all-rounder. So and originally, I had my wire settings and speeds, um, voltage settings very low because that's what it recommends, right? I'm doing the panel size and the wire speed. I found that really sucky. I found it really hard to uh, get penetration in the sheet metal. And by the time it got hot enough to get penetration, the whole panel was hot from heat soak that the next time I weld it would just blow through and just drama. So hear me out. This is my little secret tech tip for welding is crank that settings up. Crank those settings up. Have them, I had mine all the way up. Over the years I went to there, you see a mark here, a mark here. I'm up to about 18 now, so about half of the voltage and Wherever that is, I just mimic it roughly with the wire speed and it works out pretty good. So I'm pretty well up there with amperage and how much wire speed I've got going through. Now, I don't know, I'm not saying just set those settings and you're going to be fine. There's technique with it. You've got to be ultra quick on the trigger. So I'm talking like less than half a second, pretty much as you pull on and pull off, depending on the thickness of the steel, you're done. Like you're only going to... And instead of sitting there for a second or two seconds, getting that heat soaked through your whole panel, by the time you've taken off that trigger, it's cooled down. Your heat's pretty much gone because it's only had a little tiny spot that it heated up for a half a second. So hard to explain. Just give it a go. If you're having trouble with blowing through sheet metal, get 0.6 wire, go gas, and just get two bits of scrap steel, butt them together, tack them, and just have a go with the settings. Go as hot as you can go without, you know, for your reaction time, I should say, uh, without blowing through. And it just works really good. It gets it's, it gets good penetration. It sits nice and flush. I've just had nothing but success with going hotter. And it doesn't make any sense in your head. But after you do it and you realize, like, oh, well, yeah, it does make sense. Whatever. Anyway, take it or leave it. That's the advice I got. <laughs> if you've watched my other stuff, I make my own battery boxes. I don't use the... Uh, generic ones are like making out of thick ass steel so i'm just going to cut that straight out all the rust out and then we weld uh panel in and when i weld my battery box in i don't bolt it i weld them in it's going to be basically thick steel so it's going to be pretty well solid as a rock and that's just what i do This will probably be my, this will be my fourth, third or fourth tool. What I'd recommend is a little air hammer. Bloody handy. Just to, especially if you're cutting like panels or spot welds out, like you make a little groove. You can actually just cut all that along a sheet metal too if you want, but very handy. And especially you see over here where I've cleaned up all that crud, you can just hold it away from the panel and let it touch it and just like chips it all off same as that floor crap in your floor pan works wonders it's bloody loud though oh, there's so many tools I could recommend but depends on your budget it takes a long time to acquire them all but this little sucker's handy because I was a builder that's the only reason why I have this but 
makes uh, short work so So, this is my brush repair piece, and uh, yeah. All right, so that's me somewhat uh, finished using these special tools I told you about, and from there to there has been fully welded and now ground back, and that's the sort of finish you can get uh, with using this bad boy here and that sanding. This is really convenient. Good old rain. Alrighty. So that is this section done. I just finished welding and grinding that. And that section's been done. That section's been done. And that's what I mean by leaving a little bit proud. So, as I said, this is going to be all rapticated or can't, I don't know what I'm going to do in it yet, but it's going to be stone guarded and 50 layers of paint. So, I'd rather have it nice and strong rather than. Uh, flatten and ground down so the inside is going to be more important to have it nice and flat obviously but that's what I meant for any someone that's not been seen don't worry about too much just you know do whatever you want to do but for me that's fine having a little bit proud some of the smooth I mean honestly you're not going to see it especially once you've um, wrapped a coat or stone guarded in the guard uh, so that's those two pieces done and dusted. That's that one done. So this is pretty much the section from the outside anyway that's been rust repaired. One last tip. Once you're finished doing your repairs, don't leave it exposed steel. Obviously, rain, moisture, rust, back to square one. And that's why I don't ever do lap joins because it's just introducing more area for it to have rust start from moisture trapped in the lap join. I, d I don't do lap joins, up to you, but I butt join everything. Um, I had a little bit of rust, like surface rust, underneath the battery tray when I removed it. And I just wanted to show you this stuff. I've spoke about it before. I've discovered it recently, last six months. Bertan, rust converter. And I found it at first was super cheap auto, but then they stopped stocking it. And I found it again, like a bulk bottle, I think, at... Repco, one of the two anyway, you can get it in Australia, stores. Burton is freaking awesome. Now, I just sprayed it on about three minutes ago onto this surface rust. I didn't have a before picture, and I'm not sure if you can, yeah, you can see it. See how I'm just wiping it off now? That was all rusted, like, like just orange rust, like rust as you can get. You're supposed to wipe it off with water. Let me just get some water. Yeah. You should just, yeah, see that? Oh my goodness, look at that. So you spray it on, let it do its chemical reaction, and then you just wipe it off. I don't know what the repercussions are if you don't wipe it off. So if you're doing like in a cavity or something, maybe, I don't know, it just, I don't know, I don't know what happens. It says to wipe it off, so. If you can, wipe it off, if not, yeah, well, it's better than rusting, I guess. But if you're going to use water, make sure you dry it really well because you've got freshly exposed steel now. So, so if you're going to use water like I just did, just make sure it's really nice and dry. But that is fully rust treated now. Rust is not going to come back. That black um, turns the oxidization into black. Some I can't remember the name of it. It just changes the rust into a different type of rust, which is neutralized. I'm not a scientist <laughs> or whatever they call rust expert but it works pretty good um, that's probably the best stuff I've used it's not that expensive at all it's pretty cheap I can't remember if I've linked it to my Amazon or not right, if you're in Australia 13 13 it's good stuff maybe we can try to <laughs> didn't pull that out maybe I keep that for a full video because it's gonna take some time Okay, I'll do that next video. See if we can pull that sill out with the, like, as you can see, it's a humongous dent. If I can repair that, I will. Otherwise, it's gonna be like four, 500 bucks for a new sill replacement. Okay, <coughs> so, 
I've decided what we're going to do for the finish of this video off. It's going to be finishing the panel off. Let's got the sander here. We've got an Orbi. You can use whatever you want. You can hand scuff it, but basically, this is epoxy primer. But basically, this has to be scuffed back to make the mechanical adhesion work for the paint I'm going to use. So you can use grey scotch pad, red scotch pad. What doesn't really matter under here. But I've got a 400 grit. And I'm just going to give this quick buzz down places I can get with this. Otherwise, I'm going to go back to the red scotch bright and just give it a quick rough up. So my plan is to do all this section in here and then paint it a gloss black. It's an industrial black paint. And it's, it's really, really uh, industrial, as in like it is, you know, rock solid, I should say. It's very, very durable. It's good for frame and tractor implements and stuff. So under here is perfect. And then if I wanted to on top, I can hit with sand dander or stone guard and whatever. But this is going to be a really good paint uh, layer to protect the steel. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so that's all been scuffed down now. I've broken off all the old uh, seam sealer and stuff that, you know, it's all crackly and dry. you got to get rid of that because it's not good anymore, right? And to apply seam sealer, you can't apply it to bare metal. So it's either got to have a really good primer base, which would have been this, but since I've just been sitting for about six years, that's why epoxy is so damn good because it stops moisture getting in. See, I use mostly Valspar in the beer and a bit of wattle for the PR250 primer. This is Valspar TB520, top coat, basic high gloss, mixed color. Industrially strong, like resilient to chips, and this can be um, actually DTM, like direct to metal. Pretty sure TDS says it can go straight to metal, but double check that. So this is pretty good stuff. It's, uh, it's pretty good. We'll slap some of this on and just try not to get carried away about how far I paint around the corner. So I'll probably just do this top lip here. I've scuffed it, but all this is going to be painted. And then when I do the other side, I paint it too. So I mix up enough to do both. The other side has no rust repair. It's just this side here. Don't mind my uh, super nice mixing cable. It's a good old budget build, if you will. Anyway. This paint ratio is six to one. So, it's, it feels so tacky and uh, it's gonna be strong, so it's good. Six to one, so I'm gonna go, how much do you reckon we need? About 200 mil, should do it. So about uh, six to one, if I go to number three, There we are. Activator. All my activator lids just get rock solid. It's really annoying. Okay, go to uh... a little bit too much. That's all right. Now, when you before you put your reducer in, give it a bit of a stir. I was told that just give it a, a little bit to mix those two together before you put the reducer in. That goes with all your paints. I think it's just a good habit. Like, I'm not saying sit there for half an hour, just a nice little, you know. It's the right one. Oh, yeah, this will be it. Oh. It's supposed to be 20%. If you can just, uh, when you mix it, you can. F the consistency I sort of look for is like milk. A bit like a tiny little bit thicker than milk. Um, for about a one three, one four tip, one point three, one point four tip. 
I'm going to be using an FLG5. It's pretty much the cheap, cheapest uh, decent gun you can get, that in my opinion, to Velvus. It's a, it's a good brand. I think it's a 1.3 tip, I can't remember. But it's purely because this is set up for these uh, velocity cups, super easy. You've only got to clean the gun out. We'll see how it goes. All right. Alrighty then, as you can see, I just painted the front that we just prepped all up and done the rust repair. And oh my goodness, look at that motivation! Have a look at it. Oh man, it looks good. Yeah, so you can see, with a day and a half's work, we've got 99% of the car done. Am I right? But no. But all honesty, is, uh, that's what I'm talking about. I am super, super happy and just having color on something, you know, like it doesn't look like a pile of crap like it did two days ago or it's all about deceiving yourself. So that is done, that's done and the other side's done and that's now got that industrial black gloss on it, which is sets like concrete, which is awesome. So basically, when I get to the point of actual paint and prep, I'll go through and do a seam sealer on all this in, inside and top of this paint, on the whole car actually, and then before I paint the top coat. So this is technically the top coat, but I'm just going to do another top coat after. I'll just scuff that back, apply the seam sealer, and yeah, paint it finally. But, but you can see, that looks Fantastic. Oh, bonnet to the back. So, um, I'll go into in more detail in the other channel uh, with paint gun settings and all that sort of stuff once we get a bit more painting related stuff. But as you can see, it came on pretty good. Well, pretty damn good in my opinion. So, I have actually a bit of rust to do down here. So I didn't paint that, so I'm going to repair that. And then there's a little section there. And then, then the whole section's done, but I've got some more rust to do underneath there, so there's no point in me doing it twice. Anyway, that will conclude this video. I thought I'd just add a little bit more to get you guys a bit more of a, a uh, I don't know, reward for watching. Next time on Rust Resto XW Falcon, we will be doing some panel beating on this beautiful sill see if we can get that dent out and repair that rust all right thanks for watching guys that's it for this episode two of the rust resto on the xw falcon appreciate you watching along as you can see it happens pretty quick and uh hopefully this gives you the motivation to get into your car and get onto that rust repair so um yeah check out the merch shop check out amazon otherwise just smash that like and please subscribe if you haven't thanks for watching